Here is Dr. Michael Sala. We Will Never Let You Down is an extraordinary new book that gives unprecedented insights into the operations and philosophies of various extraterrestrial organizations operating in our solar system. The author, Elena Danan, shared her memories of direct contact experiences and conversations with extraterrestrials working with several of these organizations, the most significant being the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Her book is a remarkable revelation about galactic politics and extraterrestrial intervention on our planet. The book begins with a foreword by Laura Eisenhower describing her deep relief at learning that her great-grandfather, President Dwight Eisenhower, didn't sign the treaty with extraterrestrials that sold out America for technological secrets shared by grey aliens from the Orion constellation, the Naboo. Laura was referring to information Elena had passed on from Val Thor, who lived for three years as a guest of the Eisenhower administration at the Pentagon from 1958 to 1961, and who had developed a close personal friendship with the president. Today, Val Thor lives in an underground city on Venus, but continues to work with the Galactic Federation in various projects on Earth and the solar system. It was through her primary contact, Thorhan, a Pleiadian, that Elena was able to meet and talk with Val Thor on several occasions, both on board motherships and his home, located beneath Venus's inhospitable surface. It was through these physical contacts that Elena was able to receive the vital information that was so important and personally liberating for Laura Eisenhower, who had long laboured under a sense of family guilt over what she and many others mistakenly thought President Eisenhower had approved. In fact, we learned that he wanted to sign an agreement with the Galactic Federation, but the Majestic 12 Control Group, in charge of all alien-related projects, signed an agreement with the Orion Greys, the Naboo, instead, behind Eisenhower's back. I found what Val Thor had to say about his contacts with various public officials and private individuals particularly helpful in understanding the -the behind-the-scenes activities by different nations concerning extraterrestrial life. His comments about his trips to the Soviet Union, where he offered the same technological aid and philosophical advice from the Galactic Federation that had been given to the US government, were eye-opening. The Soviets, like the Americans before them, ultimately declined offers of assistance and advice from the Galactic Federation. Instead, the Soviets chose to work with the Greys, the Naboo, whose technology assistance came with no strings attached. This contrasted with the Federation's nuclear disarmament requirement that Eisenhower was prepared to accept, but was overruled by the military-industrial complex. Especially important was what Elena was told about the KGB book on alien races, which has been circulating the internet for a number of years now. Val Thor told her that the information in the book which describes many different alien races, was accurate and had been passed on to both the US and USSR by the Federation. Other countries, such as Japan and France, had also received the same information, confirming that their national leaders were also in communications with extraterrestrial civilizations and were building secret space programs. What I found very helpful was Elena's discussion of a trip to a floating mothership or city high up in Jupiter's atmosphere, where she got to meet with representatives of the Ashtar Command, who run the facility. This is the same Ashtar Command that contacted the Truman administration in July 1952 and warned about the development of thermonuclear weapons. These communications were described by the contactee George Van Tassel, who published letters sent to the US Air Force on behalf of the Ashtar Command just before the famous Washington UFO flyovers. The Jupiter facility was the same location where representatives from 14 countries with national space programs, along with CEOs of many aerospace companies, had been taken to in July 2021 and reached an agreement on how the solar system would be run. The Ashtar Command, we are told, works with but is completely autonomous from the Galactic Federation. What was truly astounding was Elena's description of the different galactic and Earth-based entities operating in our solar system. 
Back in 2013, when I wrote my book, Galactic Diplomacy, Getting to Yes with E.T., I had attempted to develop an overview of different galactic organizations. While there were multiple sources at the time describing different extraterrestrial groups, the references to galactic organizations were very scarce. Not enough reliable material was available for me to reach a clear understanding of the identity and operations of different galactic organizations operating in our solar system. Now, eight years later, Elena had developed the overview that I had unsuccessfully attempted to put together. I found Valthor's information about our planet going through a dark night of the soul very relevant to current planetary events. Given his deep knowledge of human affairs and access to time travel technologies, it's reassuring to know that we will come out of this dark period in a very positive way. Our future is very bright, according to Val Thor. We will become full members of the Galactic Federation of Worlds in the not-too-distant future, with all of its incredible technologies available to all humanity. Val Thor also acknowledges that Professor Haim Eshed, who achieved worldwide press coverage at the end of 2020 due to his revelations of the Trump administration being in touch with the Galactic Federation, was part of an official disclosure process approved by Israel's leadership. Eshed's status as the father of Israel's space program made him someone difficult to ignore. Valthor also explained that a fake alien invasion was indeed a plan developed by the Deep State using holographic technologies to frame the Galactic Federation as attackers, thereby poisoning future relations with humanity. What makes such a nefarious plan particularly relevant today is that the Orion Greys and Draco Reptilians, the Sakaar, were being forced to leave our solar system, but could return at any time with new allies in an outright invasion. Hence the urgent need for the Galactic Federation to fast-track the construction of advanced defense technologies by Earth's militaries. One of the most important points raised in We Will Never Let You Down is that despite the vast majority of humanity being in the dark about secret space programs, extraterrestrials consider humanity an interstellar species. Contact with the Dark Fleet working in tangent with the Draconian Empire is the first contact many extraterrestrial civilizations are having with humanity. We will have to deal with this terrible legacy once the Dark Fleet and its allies are driven from power on Earth and in our solar system. I could go on and on about why Elena's book is so important and is a must read. The content is breathtaking and it all comes from direct personal contact experiences with extraterrestrials on their spacecraft or homes. That's very important since this is not channeled material as some critics will want to make you believe. We Will Never Let You Down is a delightful gift to anyone open to learning the tremendous potential humanity possesses in terms of interstellar travel and relations. The book is written by a truly compassionate, intelligent and earnest author who has been chosen to play a critical role in awakening humanity to the truth about extraterrestrials visiting our solar system. I highly recommend this wonderful book, which is now available in paperback and Kindle editions on Amazon. This has been Dr. Michael Sala with Exopolitics Today.